Hello everybody. This is going to be my tutorial on fighting Thargoid swarms, the Thargons that spawn from interceptors. This is going to be focused mainly around that. I'm going to show a little bit of solo and wing combat later on, but for now this is going to be about my loadout and how to fly in the Fertile Lance. You can translate a lot of this over to what you can do in a Alliance Chieftain or a Crate Mark II, even a Federal Corvette. But for now, let's get into the loadout. First off, the Fertile Lance, I like it because it's fast, maneuverable, and agile. Very good at turning, very good at keeping up with swarms. I think it's one of the best ships for that. I like to use three gauze here, and one flak, and a long range thermal vent beam. You can do two flaks and fire them kind of staggered where you fire fire group one, fire group two. Release, release. That will pretty much double your damage output, but the TV beam really helps out. Utility mounts. 3 shield boosters, 2 heat sink launchers, xeno scanner. Boosters are aimed at maximum shields. Heat sink launchers have ammo up on them. This here is aimed at as much hull as you can get. Overcharged power plant, dirty drag drives, long range, nothing, and then charge enhanced super conduits. You can use weapon enhanced as well, it depends on your needs, along with long range sensors. Optionals. I run a bit of a obscure fertile lance style of repairing itself on the go with hull reinforcements a prismatic can also use a bi-weave quite effectively it depends on the pilot what they like to do then two cargo racks and a module reinforcement that's usually enough to get you through any axcz or singular fight and you have a lot of repairing potential with it now everybody will do kind of their own thing but let's get to the actual meat of the introduction to demonstrate why I like the Fertile Lance, and to demonstrate two things that are very important in the upcoming fight. First off, I will use everything relative to the pilot seat. Forward, backwards, left, right, up, down. Your lateral thrusters controlling your up, down, left, and right. Like this. Now these lateral thrusters are one reason why I love this ship. This here too. We can go to FA off, turn around, the throttle completely at zero, and congratulations, you're already shooting at a swarm that's chasing you. Simple as that, this is called the reverse ski. It allows you to get good shots in on a swarm. Fertile Lance having this quick acceleration, a quick change is wonderful. And now the other maneuver you need to know, I said this is not going to be so much about FA off guide, but here, is this. Flight assist off. Assist on. Being able to turn quick like that and end in the blue zone. Now, to show how this happens, if you don't know already how I do it, or how you in general do it, you have pitch. You pitch up, you lateral thruster down. If you pitch down, you lateral thruster up. Simple. So when I do the boost here and do a flip, FA off, assist, lateral off. thruster down, assist, into the blue zone. You can go immediately into maneuvers. And you can combine Flight it into assist, different things, off. such as orbiting. The other thing to know is that the Fertile Lance is a very high skill ceiling. As far as ships go, you can stall out very easily with it, but it shines in Thargon Swarm Control. And that will really be about it, as far as the intro tutorial. I will be doing a bit of a solo Bazzi to show how you fight solo, and how you take care of a swarm as effectively as possible. Probably won't go perfectly smoothly, it's going to be a pretty, well, pretty rough live recording overall. As you can tell by my mic quality, this is not going to be professional, and I don't plan on making many of these tutorials. But this will get the point across, and I'll show you what you need to know. Touchdown confirmed. Lockdown procedure initiated. The Imperial Flight Operations Bureau welcomes you to this facility, Commander. We have a basilisk inside. Quick overview of my uh, fire groups here. If you want to copy it, feel free to, or do your own thing. 
Normally, if I'm doing a solo, I'll go with four gauze and fire them in groups of two, but for this demonstration, we'll just do a normal wing loadout. After all, that is the main point, is to be able to be effective in a wing as the swarm management guy. First off, let's make sure we have our Xeno scanner ready to go. And drop in. And here he is. First thing we're going to do is get that scan in. Usually in the FDL you have so much maneuverability and speed, especially when you get to the hider phase in the AXCZ, that you're going to be doing the scanning. Scan complete. Now I'm just going to reverse out and use my pips to set up. Hopefully we can take him out pretty quick. You can see shields there if you ever need to look at them, and the hearts. Another fun fact is above the 100% on his health, and a little bit to the left, you see the sort of lines there. Those are the number of hearts on his left. Anyway, let's begin. First, I'm not going to worry about taking him out. I'm just going to back up a bit, do a 2 and 4, target the swarm, and just reverse away. See, I don't aim at the crosshair because I need to hit the edges of it when they are in that circular formation. You release. You predict the path they're going to travel, so they're going to come back. Shield breach attack. Come back. Under attack. Taking come back. Damage. You just keep doing that. Easy. Now let's take them out really quick. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm not going to try and avoid shots or anything so much. trying to get the exert in and get to the next phase to show the solo swarm magic. Parts out. And I'm not gonna bother showing how to reboot and do a cold reboot in space or anything of the kind. Flight assist off. I'm just gonna do a pretty normal fight against him really quick just to show off the swarm. So here you can see his shields there, which is very useful, and you'll notice he only has four hearts left on the icon next to him, the four little lines next to the uh, percentage he has. Now he's going to drop a swarm here, pretty quick too, out of range, 67%, like to get a little bit closer, alright there's a swarm, so first technique you can do is you boost at him and you want to get by him as quickly as possible, pop a heat sink, make it hard to hit you, Assist and suddenly you can FA off, assist off, turn, lock on a swarm, and this is the reverse key here. Swarm's much closer than he is because it turns a lot quicker. Now notice where I aim. I try not to aim exactly on the reticle because they do this figure eight pattern. I aim between them. And it's a little bit difficult to do but it's quite simple to do overall. There we go. Turn away at that shield. And actually right now is a good time for a pair grip to limp it. I'm just an FA off, thrifting away. Nothing really that difficult to do against him. Wait out the shields. He'll catch up eventually, he's quick. And you can see how fast that hole repair is on this thing. In wings it's very effective and you can even heal your own teammates up a little bit too. Target anyway, let's offline. do one more and then I will end this video there. Flight assist on. Flight assist off.
Hull repair. Let's just get that heat down a bit. Assist on. Avoid the lightning and the shots here. Pop the heat sink. In. Normally, I'd be firing a target for two and two to avoid more of these shots, but again, this is not a guy for that. Heart's out. You could go over here, synthesize more heat sinks, all the stuff you need. Flight assist off. And now here's the unique thing with the Fertilance and a lot of medium ships is you can outmaneuver these missiles in a wing fight. We'll get to that eventually, but not right now. More important is to show off one last fight against the swarm. There it is, right there. And to get that spacing away from him, you can boost past him. When you start getting kind of close, you pop a heat sink. Now see how I can avoid most of those uh, shots there from the swarm? That's crucial to be able to do. So see, I'm getting really far away from him here, and I have the swarm rather close. I can't even see the reticle with how it is, but I can estimate about... Oh, there we go. I aim in between the reticle, and I can get shots in. You see when I release, too. Now he's getting kind of close, but the swarm is down. Shots he wants at me as I have the off maneuver. That will be it for this section of the tutorial. I'm not going to finish him off. It will be too long of a video if that's the case. So, let's say goodbye to him. And he's at speed. Let's leave the instance drive charging. Next one will be a duo Dusa where I show off the wing fight mechanics too with the ship. Here we have a Threat 7, and this is just going to show a wing fight with Commander Jetlagged here. He is in a Federal Corvette, and I will be providing support. First off, I'm going to come in for the scan. He has a scanner too, but I'm just going to get it done to show everybody that's watching. Alright, you ready to start? Ready. Fire. So right now we have a bit of a bug with the swarm trying to go back in as we're firing at him. But he should find the swarm very soon. Hearts out. Heat sink deployed. And that's the first heart done. I think he's bugged. Might have to restart. Yeah, he looks bugged. Let, let's see what happens after this heart, though. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get here. Yeah. 
I'll try and pull one too. Flight assist off. Alright. So right now, anybody that's Flight watching, twice. I can see the swarms coming out. And I immediately go in for an attack on them. Warning. Shield I use that FA off turning. Flight assist. Off. Try and out them. Out. But I try and position behind the swarm the entire time. Swarm's on you. Got it. And now I position myself between jet lag and the swarm. I try and get shots in while I'm on FA off. With him moving around, it makes it much harder in the wing fight. But that's fine because it's your job to try and get better at hitting him. Hitting the swarm, my mistake. And try and stay next to the other commander. Use your nav and walk on to uh, the swarm. And now they're on me. I can drift away and take shots. It becomes much more difficult when you have another commander involved. Alright, it's down to one. Flight assist. Shield's almost dead. Alright. Swarms down. So now that we have that happen, uh, handled, I come in just to help out on the shields. And as soon as Commander Jetlag is ready, we'll go on an attack. I'm just gonna wait to see if it puts out another swarm. Alright. Because of the bug. Yeah. Okay, it looks like it's there. Shields. shields down, starting attack on. Attacking. For lightning, likely, so I boost. Try to avoid that. Hearts out. Hearts out. Yep. Now I'm going to position next to Commander Jet Lagged so that we both have shots on the heart that needed. But he already took it out. Alright, now we're going to get the caustic missiles, and this is a. I'm not going to keep myself below heat on this one. I'm going to show how you can outmaneuver for the missiles. Taking too many hits, you need to compensate for that. You have to help him out. Hearts out. You try and support. And he as important as that is, you need to stay near them too, so they can take shots at the heart too. If you have aggro. Heart down. Flight assist off. Now here, hopefully, I can show it off. The caustic missile avoidance that you can do in a lot of medium ships. Uh, you go get a repair in and everything. And now after this, the Thargoid is going to drop another swarm. So what I try and do is position ahead of time. And go right in for some easy shots on the swarm. This is supposed to be a swarm 96. Shield back missiles. up, coming back in. Swarm is down to one. Swarm down. Alright, uh, you want me to pull aggro on him? I got it. Alright. And that's a good run on the swarm there. It doesn't always go like that. I cut out the last part of me ramming right into the tank ship there because I was thrown off my flight pattern, but that is a good run there. Now we're both tear down the shields, that's why I like to have this medium TV beam here. And as support, it helps to be able to do callouts, like saying the shield's at 33%. 
letting people know what's happening. Not necessary if you're uncomfortable with it, but it's good to be able to do. Now this entire time I'm trying to work around Commander Jetlagged here. I'm going to try and stay somewhat in position with him. Flight assist. But not necessarily right next to him, just try and get ready to help out. Shields at six. Shields down. Offline. Can we use a bank then we'll go in? Alright. Now I'm gonna come right over next to him so that it is a lot easier for us to focus in together. The uh, interceptor that is. Starting run. Now it comes down to me helping with the damage output. Parts out. Yep. Going for another reboot? Yep. I'll keep this part in two and show that you can't always assist. try and position behind when you have aggro like I'm about to. So you have to lead the Thargoid around. Flight assist off. Caustic missiles are out too. Rebooting. Swarm. Should be far enough away. Yeah. Swarm is on you. Do you have any flak? Yeah, I'll handle it. Alright. So in this case we traded rolls because you need to be very malleable. You have to change what you can and can't do. And that's why I like this loadout for wings. Where I can lead the Thargoid around, take out a swarm, and also let Commander Jet lag the tank manage his own role, be able to get that reboot in, and also be able to take out Swarm's on you, I think. Him. Never mind. It's back on me. Yep. I still have the Thargoid. Now, the only thing I'm really worried about is getting lightning on me. I call it the Palpatine Special, because it's unlimited power and it will destroy this ship very quickly. Swarm so dead. I keep my distance away. And because the Corvette's so slow and Commander Jetlag called it out, I'm gonna head back towards him. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get a quick repair in on myself. Shield's at 30. Take him in for attack run past you. Are you guys' attention? Perfect. Got aggro. Right. Shields down. Ready to okay. attack. Alright, I'm attacking. Parts out. So as you see, because I'm not next to him, it's a little harder to take shots at the heart. But it's down again. On the Hydra, it's much more difficult. But it's good to keep in mind just how difficult it can be if you don't stay near the wingman. Especially for large ships. If you're in a medium ship, you can't lead it around in circles the whole time. Otherwise, they'll never get shots in. Otherwise, I'm gonna continue leading the Thargoid around because Command Jetlag needs to get a reboot repair in, and I have the speed to keep up with anything the Thargoid can throw at me. Looks like we're not gonna get an EMP. Yeah. Which is nice. Mm-hmm. Because I'm below 20% heat. Swarm's out. Shield's back. I'm gonna try something a little bit more difficult of fighting the swarm and the Thargoid at the same time. Keep 
a little bit of spacing and get shots in. Now this is the ring formation. This is what I was talking about with the Basilisk solo earlier. You don't want to aim anywhere near the crosshair. You want to imagine the edges of the ring. You want to take shots on those edges. Occasionally check the distance the Goid is from you. Pop the heat sink. Just so I don't take any unnecessary damage. And get past the Goid. It's a lot to balance at once. But anybody can do with practice. And of course I know I, Commander I have Jet. aggro. Alright, I know Commander Jetlag is going to be busy fighting, and I need to try and help him out as much as I can again. He's coming in for lightning on you. Flight assist. Shields at 18. Shields down. Attacking. saw there I got caught a little bit, but I can use that speed to get away, get a full repair in, or reboot. Diagnostic repair sequence initiated. Flight assist off. Power plant capacity exceeded. Flight assist on. Looks like the swarm's out. Alright. Do one last attack on the swarm. Repair sequence. Successful. Shields online. Thrusters online. Shields up. Coming back in. Just sent some ammo really quick. Weapons rearmed. I don't need to. I can, I can kill it. Flight assist off. Uh, we'll we'll uh, ignore attack. the swarm on this part then. Actually. I'll uh, show some more swarm combat for this circular formation everyone has trouble with. Really not much to say about it other than you have to hit those edges. Unless you're doing uh, the Pain Beaver style with a large ship. Yep. But yeah, it's Pain hit, hit the ring formation. Yes. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna show you something unique now of ignoring the swarm when it's at five. He has no hearts left. We're pretty good to just ignore it. They don't do much damage right now. I'm gonna bother throwing on a repair limpet for me. I'm just gonna come in immediately to help. Unlike this, to anybody that's watching, it makes it much easier. Uh, that's a swarm missile coming in. I'm not too worried about it. Alright, ready to finish. Get him! It makes it much easier when you want to work in a wing with other people. If everyone has their own role, they do their own thing. And the support role, it's important to remember, you need 
need to not only focus on the swarm, you need to be able to pick up that aggro, you need to be able to get good shots in, and you need to try and position around the other commander with you, especially if they are in the large ship. They are the ones that need the shots on the hearts, because they are there to soak up the damage. You're there to be saved by them. So, I fairly briefly want to go over some concepts I may have missed while recording this, because I don't have an exact script that I go off of, and trying to talk while flying an FA off and do all this stuff can be difficult, hence all the annotations that you see added in afterwards. It's not a general how to get good guide, a guide on how to fly and always win, no, it's a, it's an example. It's something for you to look at and see on how to manage swarms in a way. On top of that, it kind of evolved into something a little bit more. It became a general support guide too with the loadout that I tend to use wings. A little bit of a Bazzy solo, a little bit of a Deuce duo, and everything. But the end point, I hope, is that you figure out how to manage a swarm using some of the techniques I outlined. And if you don't understand anything, then look back on the video. Try and see how I do things. Try and figure out my movements and when I use a thruster that has different lateral controls and if I'm going up and down, left and right, all that stuff. And just kind of look at, in general, Goid Combat. Because flying as the uh, primary flak user, you have to worry about positioning, you have to worry about spacing, what the exert rate is on the heart, exactly how many Thargoids are in the instance, if it's in the AXCZ, who's getting shot, just all these different little aspects. And that includes taking out the swarm too. Assist. The swarm is probably the easy part. The actual shooting is probably the easiest part of all of this. Flight assist. The hardest part is the position you need to be in for the shots, the angle of your approach, who's getting shot from where, which allies of your uh, your side in the fights are doing fine, which one of them are. Flight assist. Are you in the right spot to support on a heart? Are you leading the gourd around fruitlessly? Because that is a horrible thing to do, and it's a very common thing to do. It's very easy to get trapped in your own world and doing. And that I think is the ultimate truth in this, is no matter how good you are, no matter how much you know FA off, no matter how accurate your gauze shots are, your job is to position and you need to be ready to hit that swarm as needed. Flight assist off. Flight now, assist on. That doesn't mean you have to do things perfectly. Perfect is not something that ever happens in wing combat. It barely even happens when you're on your own. It's more being able to cope with the stress of your own and being able to get that positioning down as needed. Yes, good flying helps. Yes, knowledge of the game certainly helps, and they are both huge. But they are not the end all only thing that exists. It's all about that spatial awareness, positioning, and being able to recover from mistakes. That's why I do some obscure movements like this right here. And push not this ship from your current vector. Right, right, ready for arrival. As you can see, it doesn't always work out, but it's practice. It's fun, and it lets you do things, and lets you think about, well, what if this is a thought here? What if I bounce off of them? What if an ally of mine is flying me and ship and bounces off of them too? It's that concept of what if scenarios combined with being able flight traffic controls over top of me. But it's the what if scenarios combined with practicing and just doing basic maneuvers, maybe looking back on this video to see, oh, maybe on the intro you need a refresher on the boosting. Maybe on the Basilisk solo you need to see 
how you have a certain turn radius on them. Maybe in the Medusa solo, how not to panic when you get hit by lightning and your canopy is half a second away from being breached. Maybe two seconds, I might be overestimating myself there. But the end goal at the end of this video that I want you to take is that you have a reference, a template to build yourself off of. Because my flight style is going to be different than yours, and it should be. And you should be able to, in your own way, be as, as efficient as possible with whatever ship you use. So, I hope this helped. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. Let me know if there's something I could do better. I may make another one of these. It's unlikely unless people really want some kind of advanced tutorial on different mechanics in this nature. Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope that this helped you, and you have a good night. And you can continue doing this, trying to orbit the Goid, staying the fly assist off and using that orbit or whatever. And then running into your wingmate.